Hi there! Welcome to the Microsoft Intune for Education Deployment Workshop. My name is Paolo Matarazzo. I'm a Program Manager in the Intune for Education product group. This is Module 2, Azure Active Directory and Microsoft Intune Fundamentals. This module consists of two sessions. In the first session, we will start with an introduction of Azure Active Directory and Microsoft Endpoint Manager. In the second session, we will introduce Microsoft Intune and Intune for Education. So let's start with Azure Active Directory and Microsoft Endpoint Manager. To provide an overview of these two services, I'd like to start by describing the student experiences with Microsoft 365, specifically how we can build an optimal environment for our students. As an example, let's look at the experiences that Alison, our fictitious student, has across the school year. At the beginning of the school year, she has a new device and she's logging in for the first time. The device is configured in a way so that she can be productive as quickly as possible. She can focus on her learning outcomes instead of focusing on how to configure her device. The device is quick and responsive and all the applications that she needs are right there. As she opens different applications like Teams or OneNote, she has access to them right away. There are some great applications that Halizon has access to, for example, OneNote, where she can use inking and immersive reader. Steps for solving linear equation. The equation is in standard form. If she needs additional applications, she can open Company Portal and do self-servicing so that applications that are made available to her, she can install on her own. And at the end of the year, when it's time for testing, she can use a Take a Test, a component of Windows 10, to securely take the exam. So what made these great student experiences? From an end user perspective, we have to think about three components. The first component is identity. Identity is really the common thread across all of these experiences. Identity is a digital representation of a user. So when Alison types her username and her password, she is authenticated and authorized to use the device or different applications. Her identity is cloud connected. That means that she can access cloud applications. Cloud applications are applications that are designed to leverage these cloud identities. For example, when we saw Alison opening OneNote, she was identified as Alison. But this can apply to different applications, for example, Minecraft Education Edition, and so on and so forth. The last component that we need to take into account from an end user perspective are the devices. These are the devices that our users are using to consume the cloud applications. Ideally, these devices are configured to provide an optimal experience to our end users with fast access and ready to be used as quickly as possible. An important component of this experience is a single sign-on. And with that, we mean that the users are automatically authenticated every time they open an application. In the example before, we saw Alison opening different applications and she didn't have to type her password anytime she opened them. But what enables these great student experiences? With that, we have to take a look at two fundamental services. The first service is uh, the identity platform, Azure Active Directory. Azure Active Directory is uh, the authentication and authorization platform for the Microsoft 365 Cloud. Any Microsoft Cloud solution leverages Azure Active Directory to provide access to the applications. Third-party applications can also integrate with Azure Active Directory. So from an end user perspective, the end user is defined in Azure Active Directory. So when we saw Alison typing her username and password, she was authenticated against Azure Active Directory. Now for the cloud applications, 
to leverage these cloud identities, they have to be registered in Azure Active Directory. Or in other words, we have to have a trust between these applications and Azure Active Directory. For an optimal experience, we want also to have the devices registered in Azure Active Directory. By registering devices in Azure Active Directory, we can enable the single sign-on experiences that we described before, and also we can start managing the devices. With that, let's introduce Microsoft Endpoint Manager. Microsoft Endpoint Manager is a second pillar that enables these experiences. Microsoft Endpoint Manager is a collection of services that allows us to manage the devices and to configure the devices in an optimal way. The core focus of this course is Microsoft Intune. Microsoft Intune is one of the services provided by Microsoft Endpoint Manager. With Intune, we can manage the devices so that we can build these end user experiences by configuring the devices and deploy applications to the devices. For Microsoft Intune to manage these devices, the device must be registered in Azure Active Directory. So Microsoft Intune has a dependency on Azure Active Directory to manage the devices and to push policies. Also, Azure Active Directory has a dependency on Microsoft Intune. For example, Azure Active Directory can leverage compliance status information about our devices to enable what is called conditional access. With conditional access, for example, we can determine if a user can access a specific application if the device complies with certain rules. An example can be Allison can access her email only if her device has uh, the firewall enabled. So before we jump into the first demo, I want also to briefly introduce uh, the tools that we need to manage these services. Under a tooling perspective, I introduce Microsoft 365 Admin Center. From the Microsoft 365 Admin Center, there are links that allows us to access the Azure Active Directory Admin Center, which is used to manage Azure Active Directory, or the Microsoft Endpoint Manager Admin Center, which is used to manage Microsoft Endpoint Manager and Intune. Without any further ado, let's jump into our first demo, where we're going to create a new Azure Active Directory tenant with an Intune for Education subscription. This lab is a foundation lab, meaning that we will leverage this lab in the future demos. At the end of this lab, we will have an Azure Active Directory tenant with some users and groups that will be leveraged in the future demos. To create a new Azure Active Directory tenant with an Intune subscription, let's jump over Bing and search for Microsoft Intune for Education. Let's select this link that describes Microsoft Intune for Education. And from here, we can start our free trial. Remember, if you already have an Azure Active Directory tenant, you can add a Microsoft Intune for Education subscription to your existing tenant by selecting Sign In. In my case, I want to start with a brand new Azure Active Directory tenant, therefore I fill out this form. Now that we filled out the form, let's select Next. And let's specify the username of the first user account that would be created in this Azure Active Directory. This is also the global administrator. In this second field, we have to select an Azure Active Directory tenant domain name that has not been already taken. It's validated, that means that I can obtain this Azure Active Directory domain. By selecting Create My Account, a new Azure Active Directory tenant will be created and a Microsoft Intune for Education faculty trial subscription will be attached to it.
And now our Azure Active Directory tenant is ready to go. Let's now explore Microsoft 365 Admin Center. This is a hub of all different administrative consoles for the Microsoft 365 Cloud. To get access to Microsoft 365 Admin Center, you can go to admin.microsoft.com and sign in with the global administrator that we created during the creation of the tenant. From here, you can see a link to all admin centers. We can access Azure Active Directory Admin Center, Microsoft Endpoint Manager, and Intune for Location. You can customize this console so that you can add to your favorites the consoles that you use the most. By selecting these checkboxes, the links will be created to the left-hand side. Let's explore Azure Active Directory. By selecting that shortcut, we are redirected to the Azure Active Directory Admin Center. You can get access to it by navigating to aad.portal.azure.com. If we select Azure Active Directory, we have a list of all the different aspects that we can manage of Azure Active Directory. For example, if we want to see all the users in our directory, we select users. And this is the tenant administrator that we created during the previous demo. If we select groups, we will see a list of all the Office 365 groups and also security groups that are created within this tenant. If we select devices, we can see all the devices that have been registered in this tenant. Lastly, I want to point out enterprise applications. This contains a list of all the applications that have been registered in this specific tenant. What that means is that to access these applications, you will have to use a user that is defined in this specific tenant. Through the power of video editing, let's skip ahead and uh, create some user accounts and groups in Azure Active Directory. To create all of these users and groups in the tenant, I use the School Data Sync, which is a solution that allows you to synchronize information about students and teachers from a student information system to the Microsoft 365 Cloud. Specifically, by providing information about my students and staff and teachers, I created user accounts. And if we go under Azure Active Directory Groups, School Data Sync provisioned for me different Microsoft 365 groups, which are the backend for Teams, and the different security groups, a security group for each school, and also security groups for all teachers and students of any given school. These groups will be used in future demos for targeting for Intune. One thing I want to call out is that for users to be using Intune or Intune for Education, they have to be licensed. For example, if we take Allison and we look at the details for licenses, for her to be able to receive policies or applications from Intune, then she has to have an Intune or Intune for Education license assigned. You can manually assign licenses or let School Data Sync assign licenses for you. This concludes our first demo and the first part of module two. In the second part, we will look at Microsoft Intune and Intune for Education.